Hello and welcome to SimScale. In this video tutorial, we will perform a fluid flow simulation of a non-written valve. The objective of this simulation will be to obtain key performance parameters such as pressure drop and recirculation regions throughout the valve. This tutorial teaches how to set up and run a steady state incompressible CFD analysis, extract fluid volume out of the solid valve, assign material and boundary conditions, mesh using the standard algorithm in SimScale, and finally, explore SimScale's online post-processor to analyze the results. The link to the documented version of this tutorial can be found in the description. However, if you wish to perform this tutorial with me, click on the import project link provided in the description, and that shall right away take you to the SimScale workbench. All right then, let's begin. The workbench looks like this. In front of you, is the solid valve geometry. The valve has an inlet and an outlet. You can explore more about this geometry by changing the render mode to translucent. This gives you an insight into the CAD geometry. This is one half of the valve. This is because the valve is symmetric in nature and we will take an advantage of this, subsequently reducing our computational expenses. Since this is a solid body and we want to do a fluid flow analysis, we need to extract the fluid volume out of it. To do that, we will go to CAD mode. Click on Edit in CAD mode icon. This will take you to the CAD mode interface. To create an internal flow volume, Go to Flow Volume and click on Internal. We need to pick up a bunch of faces. Starting with Boundary Faces, click on the Boundary Faces. Now a Seed Face. A Seed Face is any face that is adjacent to the Boundary Faces. So it can be either of this, this, this or this. Alright then, click Apply. Our fluid flow region is created and that can be seen in blue color. We still need to get rid of the solid part. To do that, under body, go to delete and pick up the solid valve. Click apply. In the scene tree, you can see that the flow region has been created. Click finish to exit CAD mode. We are back into the workbench. And now, along with the existing non written valve geometry, we have a copy of it. And this is nothing but the fluid volume that we just created. Let's create the simulation. This is an incompressible analysis. So click on incompressible and then create simulation. This opens up a simulation tree. The simulation tree has various nodes and each node has its importance. You need to make sure that each node has a green check mark before you can begin the simulation run. This is the global settings. Here, you can define parameters like time dependency, turbulence models, and some other parameters. For this model, we will use K omega SST while Time dependency would be steady state. Click Save. Next, Materials. We will be simulating a flow of water through the valve. So click on Water and Apply. This opens up a settings panel for the properties of water. You can change them if you want to or keep them as default. The flow region has automatically been assigned. Click Save. Now is the time to assign some boundary conditions. This is a pressure driven flow. So we'll have pressure inlet and pressure outlet. Click on boundary conditions and select pressure inlet. 
make sure you assign the inlet phase. This phase is parallel to the XC plane. In the settings panel, make sure the pressure type is total pressure and the value is 3 into 10 to the power 5 pascals. Click save. The procedure is same for the pressure outlet. However, this time we will have pressure type as fixed value. The value will be 0 pascals. A gauge pressure of 0 pascals means that the fluid exits freely into the atmosphere. Assign the outlet phase. Click save. Finally, we will assign the symmetry boundary conditions. Carefully select the three planes that exhibit symmetry. One, two, three. Before clicking save, if you wish to, you can change the name of your boundary conditions. Click save. Now, let's move on to simulation control. Here, you can set a bunch of settings like the end time of the simulation, the time step, the right control type, right intervals, number of processors to be used, and so on. For the simulation, these settings are enough. However, you can change the end time to 2500 or a similar value just to ensure a tight convergence. Similarly, for the right interval. Click Save. You can also use some result control items to observe the convergence behavior of certain items of interest. This can be velocity, pressure, or any variables involved in the analysis. So go to Result Controls and click on Surface Data. Next, click on Area Average. Let's assign the inlet phase. Change Right Interval to 5 and rename it as Area Average Inlet. Click Save. You can do the same thing with the outlet. Next, let's mesh the valve. Go to Mesh. This opens up the settings panel for the standard algorithm that SimScale uses to mesh the CAD geometries. The default settings are enough. This includes a fineness of 5, automatic boundary layers, hex element core, and some other advanced settings. Do take some time out and check each and every setting. Play with them to see how it affects your mesh quality. Click Generate. The mesh takes approximately 3 minutes to finish. You can explore the mesh. The mesh is composed of tetrahedral and hexahedral elements. If you wish to ensure that your mesh has a good quality, don't forget to check our mesh quality feature. All right then, let's begin our simulation. Go to simulation runs. This will open up a dialog box with an estimation of resources that will be consumed. Rename your run if you wish to. Now, let's start our simulation. The simulation takes around 1 to 2 hours to finish. Before jumping on to the push processor, let's have a look at some convergence plots. For that, go to Run and under Area Averages, go to the Area Average Inlet that we had set up. Now, since our inlet was in the direction of the Y axis, I'm more interested in the Y component of the velocity. Here you can see that over time, the Y component of the velocity is pretty stable. You can do the same thing for all the other values involved. You can also have a look at the minimum values of residuals reached during convergence. Under Convergence Plots, 
go to residuals now that we have analyzed conversions let's move on to the post processor click on post process results this takes you to the sim scales online post processor before beginning to analyze results ensure that you are at the last time step and there are no additional filters already assigned for a valve analysis it will be interesting to analyze the pressure drop. For that, we need to create some cutting planes. Start by adding filters and create a cutting plane. Make sure the cutting plane has the following characteristics. Now that our cutting plane is created, let's calculate the average pressure values at the created phase. To do that, go to bulk calculator and under legends, right click and switch to cell data. Now you can see that for this phase, the average values of pressure are 2.54 into 10 to the power 5 pascals. Take a note of it. Similar to this cutting plane, we will create another cutting plane in this direction to analyze the values downstream. For that, click on add filter and create another cutting plane. This time, the characteristics should be as follows. The second cutting plane has been created and can be seen here. The average values for pressure can be noted from the bulk toggle calculator. Take a note of this. Now to calculate pressure drop, subtract the value for pressure obtained for the upstream from the value of pressure obtained for the downstream. This will give you the pressure drop. Another interesting phenomena that might happen in a valve is recirculation. To observe recirculation regions, let's create another cutting plane. Before that, if you wish to, you can toggle these cutting planes off so that they don't interfere in your workflow. Now, the third cutting plane should have the following characteristics. Now that the cutting plane is created, let's have a closer look. You can see that there are many regions of recirculation. We have toggled on vectors so that we can analyze the flow in detail. You can see that in this region, the velocity vectors travel backwards. This brings us to the end of this session. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial and learned something valuable. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. See you next time.